a little over five years ago in my physical prime, I achieved my career high of number 371 in the world. But within six months of achieving my career high ranking, I decided to quit professional tennis altogether. Since the beginning of my tennis HQ, this has been a question that I get a lot. So let's talk about it today. First, I wanna talk about how I felt in the moment and what led me to that decision. Then I wanna reflect on that decision now, years removed from and with more experience. And then I wanna talk about why, now that I'm close to 30 years old, I've decided to give pro tennis another shot. Oh, if you don't recognize where I am, it's actually a pretty good setup for a hotel room. I'm in Harlingen, Texas for a 25K. I arrived here a couple days ago from Morelia where I won this bad boy right here. My first title of the comeback, I won the 15K in Morelia. Shout out to everyone that was there watching. Um, not bad for a YouTuber, huh? One, one title in two tries, uh, I would take that. <laughs> I'd take that statistic if I could. And again, I don't have a lot of footage from it because I always tell you guys, when I go to these tournaments, I go to win. It's difficult for me to focus on filming and all that stuff. We're figuring this out, don't worry. We're gonna find a way to share this story. I still wanna figure out the best way that I want to share uh, this comeback, this story with you guys. I am going to make a podcast episode about it where I'm gonna go over uh, what happened that week. Remember, it's an email list exclusive podcast, so sign up, I'll leave a link down below to our newsletter and you are going to receive the episode right in your mailbox. But yeah, now I'm probably into the top thousand, I think in the 900s, which makes it a bit easier to get into main draws, hopefully. Um, I have three more events this year, including this one in, in Texas. Uh, and then I'm gonna call it a year. So thanks again for your support, this title. Um, it's ours, not just mine. I uh, really appreciate it. Let's go right to the video. All right, so quitting at 25, what the f happened? What was going on through my mind at the time? And there's basically three things that pushed me into quitting um, at that time. Number one is lack of money. Uh, it's a story as old as time, but in tennis or probably in most individual sports, if you have to fund yourself and pay for all the traveling and everything, it becomes very difficult to make ends meet. I was doing really well in terms of results. I had climbed up to top 400 very quickly. Um, but if you look at the prize money, you see how, how little it is. I'd make more money playing men's opens, nowadays UTR events, than I'd make you know, playing uh, low level tennis. And since I wasn't able to get sponsors, I was having a hard time, you know, paying the bills and all that stuff. And eventually that pressure uh, became a lot to handle and I just didn't want to deal with it anymore. Number two was the lifestyle. Playing tennis is a very lonely sport when you're competing professionally. I had just come from playing college tennis, which were by far the best four years of my life when it comes to tennis, playing for a team. You know, you're traveling together, you're trying to accomplish a goal together. It's something that you don't really have in tennis at really any stage, in pros, in juniors. And it's really difficult to handle it. You know, some people maybe truly enjoy it. I'm saying from my perspective at the time, I did not like it. And the highs of winning a few events definitely didn't make up for all the lows, for the time, for just the lifestyle living on a, off a suitcase um, and just traveling a lot and, and, and kind of getting beaten up a lot. and. Um, I was definitely not mentally equipped to handle that at that age. Number three, the f transition tour. If you don't know what the transition tour is, Google it, like it's, it's ridiculous. But basically in 2019, the ATP and the ITF were kind of beefy. And what happened was the ATP removed points from ITF events. They were trying to make the, the rankings like smaller so they could take care of more players kind of like thing. So starting in January of 2019, uh, there were two different rankings, an ITF ranking and an ATP ranking. The only way to get into challengers were, was to play in this ITF tour, like the futures, and climbing up that rankings and there would be spots for ITF players in challengers, like the top ITF players technically. So for me at the time, I was in the 500s, it meant completely starting for, from scratch. Like if I was, you know, if the system has stayed the same way, I'm 500, I win a future or two, I'm back to kind of my old ranking, I'm getting close to the challengers, but this way I had to go back fully into 15s to try to get this ITF ranking thing, um, to try to play challengers, and that just 
to me, you know, at the time I'm already kind of leaning into, into quit, quitting and that was like the final nail on the coffin really. Of course, that was an absolutely idiotic idea. Players revolted and six months later they changed it back and they gave points back to futures and the system basically um, was back to normal. But for me at the time, someone who's already not really feeling anymore, I was like, f*** it, I'm out. And before we continue the video, shout out to today's video sponsor, Element. Element is a tasty electrolyte drink mixed with everything you need and nothing you don't. That means a lot of salt and no sugar. I'm taking these with me everywhere I go now. They're perfect for what I need. They're easy to travel with uh, and they keep me going <laughs> during matches, really. <laughs> Element contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio with none of the junk, no sugar, no coloring, no artificial ingredients, no gluten, no BS. Element can help prevent and eliminate headaches, muscle cramps, fatigue, sleeplessness, and other common symptoms of electrolyte deficiency. Right now, Element is offering you guys a free sample pack with any Element order. That's eight single serving packets with any Element order. It's a great way to try all the flavors. These two are my favorite, raspberry and citrus salt. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash mytennishq. This deal is only available through my link. So again, that's D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash mytennishq. These are absolutely awesome. Don't miss out. Link is in the description. So those are really the in the moment decisions. You got to think about when you know, you're 24, you're 25, you're trying to figure out what to do with your life. Uh, and if this is the lifestyle you, you'd like. But now that I'm five years removed from it, I have a few extra thoughts on really what led me to quit. The first thing, and to be completely honest, I was just f***ing over it. I was over the lifestyle. Um, you have to think about it, this, this whole like going to tournaments and, and trying to get better didn't start when I was 20, it started when I was you know, nine, I was already playing tournaments. It had been my entire life doing that same thing, trying to accomplish that, that same goal. And that really is the honest truth. I started making a little bit of money, I was able to sustain myself, still within tennis, uh, been in a different way. And you have to understand, I come from a third world country um, in America, life in America is amazing once you start sustaining yourself and, and there's so much opportunity out here um, that I figure, well, I can use the skills that I have to, to live a really quality lifestyle uh, in America and, and that was really appealing to me at the time. I could still use all the skills that I acquired for the you know, last 20 something years, um, but not really be too concerned about this like pursuit of excellence and really try to focus on different things that you know brought me happiness and joy and fulfillment and all that stuff. Number two, I do have a hard time with things that are out of my control. With uncertainty, I overthink things. It's something I've been working on for a long time now, but it's, it's part of me and playing professional tennis is basically all uncertainty. <laughs> and I really wasn't able to deal with all that stuff at the time. I think to make it in this sport, or really any sport, but this is what I know, it's you have to be a little bit crazy. You have to have some irrational confidence and that's honestly never been me. I'm more stoic about things. I don't ride too high or not or too low. And that life of professional tennis definitely is not a stoic lifestyle, I'll tell you that much. And number three, to be honest, the last five years have been a lot about figuring out who I am outside of tennis, really. When you play a sport your entire life, that becomes your identity, right? Like, who are you, Karu? Oh, I'm a the tennis player. I'm like, you know, it's, a, it's an ego sport, but once you try to remove that and figure out, you know, how you want to live your life, your values, all those things, uh, what makes you happy, what brings you down, all, all that kind of stuff, um, you, you maybe don't think about it as much. You solely focus on that one task. And people who are older than me leave a comment below, but I feel like this, you know, time between like 25 and 30, you, you change so much. You're, there's so much to figure out um, that tennis became a bit secondary, to be honest. And the thing is, people might think, oh, Karu, you must regret it. You have so much talent. You should have kept going, blah, blah, blah. But the fact is, I have zero f***ing regrets. Zero, absolutely none. I'm, I'm not religious or spiritual, but I think the universe has a plan. So much cool shit happened the last five years between, you know, working with Naomi, winning Grand Slams, meeting all these people, you know, again, using my skills to maybe do something different with tennis. 
And you have to remember, I'm from a small town in Brazil, and today I have contacts on my phone that, like, I almost can't believe it. People that I can text that I'm like, how is it possible that I have this person's number? And of course, starting this, My Tennis HQ, if I hadn't quit, probably, this probably wouldn't have happened. Um, and this last few years allowed me to focus a lot on this and creating uh, this online community and this business and everything that uh, My Tennis HQ has accomplished so far. So now that I've done all that and I have that, this little extra stability in my life, playing pros is just a bonus, it's just an add-on. I'm doing this to challenge myself one last time. Like, to be honest, I don't give a fuck about the ranking, I don't give a fuck about making money with tennis, I really don't care. And don't take it personally, it's not for you as well, even though I am going to bring you along in this journey. I just wanna play some high-level tennis, match by match, and see where it leads me. That's, to be honest, where I'm at. But now I get to do it in front of 111,000 people and counting. So I hope that answers the question once and for all. Again, I think there's a lot of players who maybe love playing tennis, but they don't love the business of tennis or the, the, the lifestyle of playing tennis. They have, might have a lot of talent, but they don't feel maybe fulfilled by that part of tennis. And I think that's okay, it's not for everybody. It certainly wasn't for me at that age. Um, we'll see if it's for me at this stage. It might not be, but again, I'm playing uh, one match at a time, um, one title at a time. But definitely having you guys and my tennis HQ gives me that little bit of stability that I need uh, to go at it. So thank you very much. Thanks for the support. This title here is just the beginning. I hope this answered that question once and for all. Thanks for watching. Wish me luck, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you.